Hi everyone, it's Natasha Nichols. Um, I am coming to you this very early Saturday morning uh, because I'm about to do a little bit of work in my garden or um, for my, my actual backyard garden and my community garden. And I wanted to show you a little bit of how I started things out because I know that I was getting a lot of questions on my Facebook page. Um, and it's okay if I am live and no one is here because it's like 9.15 on a Saturday morning. So I know lots of people are either out running errands or still um, asleep like I should be. So uh, there are a couple of things that I start with. And one of them is um, I don't do a lot of direct sow because we have uh, pigeons and birds that fly around and they'll eat the seeds. They'll um, actually uh, peck through the garden or the soil and eat the seeds. So I do um, seed starter kits. And then with those seed starter kits, I can go ahead and um, actually plant the entire pot into the garden. So um, at your local garden center or a Home Depot, a Lowe's, a Walmart, Meyer, or any other like uh, super center store that you have, you can um, get your gardening supplies. And I start with, sorry, um, Jiffy pellets. Um, you can get these in a kit or you can get them uh, by themselves if you save your plastic uh, trays over um, each year. So these are Jiffy pellet refills and they come, sorry, looking like this. So this one right here, I've already filled with water. These are larger. I'm using these for tomato plants because tomato stalks are so um, um, strong. They're very, very thick. So these started out flat and they're growing up higher. So they're gonna get probably about uh, five or six inches tall. And then I'm gonna plant the tomato seeds directly into them. And then they'll um, germinate. They'll germinate and um, after about uh, six or seven weeks, I can plant them directly into the soil and they'll be better for that. Instead of planting directly into the soil and waiting for the seeds to germinate that way. Uh, because it's Chicago, um, we do have a uh, chance of frost, and tomatoes do not do very well in frost. Once a tomato, hi D, how are you? Delal, how's it going? Thanks for joining. We're talking about gardening if you want to start one. So in this tray, uh, particular tray, I'm going to do all tomato plants. I'm going to do mortgage lifters, which are huge. I like large tomatoes, and then um, some steak hybrid sandwich tomatoes. I'm also going to do some Cherokee purples and some heirloom tomatoes, which um, just, it's really old seeds uh, that everyone, <laughs> I wish I sounded like a professional gardener. My, my um, desire is to become a master gardener, but I think that's a couple years off. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but we're going to do all tomato plants in these larger ones because they're able to support the tomato stalks and the seeds. And since tomatoes, you have to wait until their second pair of leaves um, um, germinate before transferring them over into the garden, it's gonna take a while. Uh, we're also planting broccoli, cucumbers, which grow very fast and give off a lot of fruit. Um, we're planting okra, which I'm very excited about because I pickled some last year and then we used it in a lot of um, soups and stews. Uh, I have sugar snap peas. I have corn going. Um, I'm really excited about the corn too because last year we had it and uh, we got several ears off of each stalk and then I learned a little bit more. Instead of planting them um, in straight lines, we're going to plant them in a circle and then that way they'll be able to pollinate each other better. Yeah, Nicole, the second leaves. You want them to sprout their second leaves before you plant them into the, into the ground. And then after that, um, you want to make sure that you're only watering the soil and not the leaves, because if you water the leaves and then leave them in the sun, they'll either rot um, or the sun will burn them. And you don't want that to happen at all. So with all of your plants, make sure you're not watering from the top of the plant down because you'll also, um, as with corn, you'll get rid of the pollen and it'll float away and then won't stick on the silks, which you need it to do in order for it to pollinate the kernels because the kernels do not grow first. The kernels are the silks that you see. Um, so every one of those silks uh, accounts for a corn kernel, and you want that to, um, you want it to grow, obviously. You want them to get nice and flat, fat and plump and full of water, and that's what will happen. So we're going to do, um, oh, we're also growing watermelon. 
Um, I'm growing honeydew melon. I'm growing, um, this is an heirloom. These are the mortgage lifters that I was talking about. Dalal, I think you would like these. Um, they're huge. They get uh, about, you can have uh, tomatoes that weigh as much as two pounds, which is, they're huge. Um, and uh, yes, that, that will happen, Nicole. Hi, Auntie Rose. Um, it will happen if you water your pellets and then don't put seeds in it. It will grow mold. Um, what you can do is uh, um, brush the mold off, water them again, and then plant your seeds. Otherwise, like I said, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or any gardening center and just buy a pellet refill. That way you don't have to throw away the tray that you have because it's a greenhouse and you want the heat to trap in there to help germinate those seeds faster. Okay? Um, we are also doing spinach. And we're going to do some acorn squash because this is what we have for Thanksgiving. Uh, these were $3.48 at Home Depot. Um, I went to the Home Depot in um, Chicago Ridge and uh, I think I cleared them out. But every Home Depot should have them because all of their plants are starting to come out too. So all of their vegetable plants are, are starting to uh, show on the, the shelves and... Um, yeah, you'll be able to find some strawberry plants too because our strawberry plants have actually sprouted. Those are ever bearing. So I just transplanted those from the garden into um, pots, large pots, and we should have strawberries coming up pretty soon. So the strawberries are going to, um, a couple are starting to flower, which means the fruit is about to come. They're gonna flower in May, um, once in June, and then another time in August, and then they'll be done again and then they'll become compost for, for the pots. And then they, they will pop back up next year around this time. So April and May are when strawberry seeds are, are going to start coming back up. We're also doing onions. We're going to plant some onions today. Um, and some beets, which I'm the only person in the house that likes them. So I do red and golden beets. Um, uh, Shamari thinks that they taste like dirt. <laughs> As... As do all all the other people that I that I talk to about it. Um, I am looking forward most to my pickles and my cucumbers, and um, uh, we're doing asparagus and garlic too. So we also, um, if you've been following me online, we got two plots of land uh, across our street, and we are starting a community garden. So today we'll be working on building. <laughs> um, what am I not planting? I, I, I'm not planting onions um, or the green onions, mostly because, I don't know, I'm kind of scared to do those for some reason. Uh, I think they're a little bit too fragile. And we're not doing as many beans as I thought I was going to do because I can't find Crowder peas, uh, purple whole beans, which my mom wants. Um, oh, and we're doing greens again, too. So we're going to, uh, I don't think so, Melanie. You can you can get them from your, your local store and then uh, transplant them. Just remember they are um, very, very invasive. Uh, so they send out they send out sprouts and they will travel down your entire garden if you don't watch them. So if you see them send out, um, um, they call them feeders. If you see them send out one, you either want to go ahead and cut it off at the stem because it'll have a root at the bottom already and then plant it back around the other strawberries or you can put them in a planter box and kind of control them that way. Uh, we are going to build um, a planter, a vertical planter, and put strawberries in that. That way, when they send out the feeders, um, you can they can go down the down the planter. So, uh, no, it's not too late at all because you still have a couple more um, harvests of the strawberries that you can do. Okay, so if you joined me um, earlier, I uh, watered these pellets. They were flat. And these are the larger ones um, compared to the flat ones. So you can see uh, how much larger they are. These are for tomato and very, very hardy um, stemmed uh, uh, plants. These are for things like peas and cucumber plants and um, onions. And uh, I could put broccoli in these too because the broccoli stalk is so strong. Someone has joined me this morning. That's Penelope. Say hi, Penelope. Hi. Uh-huh. She's also my helper. Uh, she helped in the community garden. We cleaned up a lot of trash. And she uh, she cleaned up like a champ. It was awesome. You're welcome, Melanie. So we're going to get started on planting the um, tomatoes. Um, now, 
I am a person that does not like to thin my seeds at all. I really don't. Um, mostly because it makes me sad and there's no one around here. Uh, there's no one around here. Someone said, hey, cutie. Uh, there is no one around here to um, take the seeds that I thin out. So um, I tend to just do one seed, um, one or two seeds per plant. And if I can, um, I'll try to transplant it to another. So since we have the, the, the garden across the street, um, we will um, probably keep all of the plants that sprout. Another thing, if you're going to grow tomatoes, when you check the back of the packet, you're going to see it described as a determinate or an indeterminate plant. A determinate plant does not grow very high. It kind of bushes. So you can keep that in control with uh, just a small cage. But an indeterminate plant can get as large as six to eight feet high. Okay? You want to make sure that you have something to stake that tomato plant on. Because six to eight feet high is high. Um, I'm only 5'2", so my tomato plants got taller than I did yet, uh, last year. Um, and it's something glorious that you can see. Uh, thinning out plants is um, your, your plant packet will tell you to um, plant... Uh, you know, in, in rows a quarter inch deep and then two inches apart. And then they want you to thin them out to three to four feet. Uh, what you're doing is you're looking for the strongest plants. And then you're going to only leave the strongest plants and take the ones that look a little bit weaker to you or look like they're not growing as fast as the other ones. So you're, you're thinning them out that way. Uh, but I don't like to do that with tomatoes because tomatoes are a hot commodity around here, um, as are cucumber plants. Because we eat cucumbers probably daily when we go and pick them from the garden. So um, these um, mortgage lifters, I don't know if Delal is still on. Uh, the mortgage lifters get to from, they grow anywhere from two and a half to four pounds. So these are going to be some very, very large tomatoes. Um, and then the sandwich tomatoes are about 10 ounces a piece. And these are perfect for sandwiches. But the mortgage lifters are the ones that we love to eat like apples. Um, and then I have Romas which we're going to uh, use for tomato paste and tomato sauce. So I'm going to do a canning video probably um, later this summer uh, about that process. And then we have um, a couple of other ones, Cherokee Purples, which are just, they're large tomatoes, but they have a purplish, pinkish purplish, purplish um, um, hue. And then we have German Queens, which are also pink. You want to tell something? Okay. What do you want to tell about? Um, these. Uh, they can't see you. Okay. What are they called? Watermelons. Yeah. Do you like watermelons? Yeah. Okay. Are so you... these watermelons are huge. Yeah. These watermelons will get to about 40 pounds a piece. And these are the ones that you see when you do your family reunions. Those really super long watermelons um, that are super sweet. So we're trying again with these because with the watermelons and the squash... Your zucchini, your acorn squash, um, you will see the fruit before it's pollinated. So what you want to do is, when, the moment you see that fruit, you want to self-pollinate. So you can use a Q-tip or a um, paintbrush only for that. And remember to, to rinse out your paintbrush if you are pollinating, because you don't want to cross-pollinate. Um, and you can um, you can paint the male flower and then go back and paint the female flower. So essentially, you are doing. Um, what is known as either uh, uh, fertilization yourself um, and making sure that all of those babies are born. Yeah, 40 pounds. So these are 40 pounders, um, or these are the 40 pounders. And then we have the Crimson Sweet, which are the round ones um, that, you, that you get. And these grow to about 25 pounds. Um, we might keep just and one seed, uh, but most seeds keep about two to three years. If you keep them, hold on, if you keep them... Um, locked up properly and out of heat or or very very cold sources okay go ahead um and these baby uh hmm, cucumbers cucumbers are very going to get really big okay so we're making what out of these um we're gonna put them in a jar with vinegar and we're gonna make what pickles pickles yes pickles will be made from these uh, we also have my favorite squash, which is butternut. So we're, we're growing that, and we'll have them hopefully for uh, fall and winter. And we have honeydew melon. 
Let's write. And then there are some times where I like to get things where, you know, you just don't see them often. These are lemon cucumbers. Um, lemon they're round cucumbers. And, and yellow. They don't taste like lemons at all. It's only because they're, they're shaped like lemons. Uh, and they have very um, thin skins and they're not bitter. So you want, you want, if you don't like the bitterness of cucumbers, you also see um, in seeds burpless cucumbers. And those you may see in Bonnie or um, Burpee, um, Burpee seed pack and packets. Here's some more. That just means that uh, if you eat them, it won't produce a gas that makes you burp a lot when you eat those cucumbers. That's the only thing that it means. Uh, I looked that up last year because I was really interested. I always saw burpless cucumbers, and it's very funny to me. So we're going to get started. And here's some seeds of um, peas. What kind? Remember, you like to pick them from the garden and eat them right away. Sugar snap? Sugar snap peas. Yes, they're very good to eat, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start some, with the mortgage lifters. And some of them are big. Yes. And you always want to keep your seed packets because you want to know what kind you grew. Um, this is also a great time where you can keep a gardening uh, journal. I love journals. I love planners, journals, everything like that. Um, and uh, say what type you, you kept or planted, how they did, and if you would like to grow them again. Uh, another gardening tip is do not plant tomatoes in the same plot that you planted them before because you've already depleted the nutrients and you want to plant something that's going to be nitri nitrogen rich or nitrate rich. Peas would go great there, um, not corn, um, anything. Peas, no potatoes either, and don't plant potatoes and tomatoes next to each other. So the tomatoes, they don't give you a lot of seeds for a reason. Uh, and these are mortgage lifters again that we're planting. So Penelope already knows the, the deal. So we open these up a little bit on top. Hold on. Okay. We open them up a little bit on top and she's going to plant one seed in and then we close it. Well, I don't have some. It's okay. I have some more in my hand. Um, Shantae, I would love to. Uh-huh. Just this, the one. Just the one. But that, this is the same one. Yeah, I know. We're putting it in there. We're just doing all tomatoes in this in this tray. Okay? And you're just opening them. And digging to a depth of, a, of, of about a quarter inch. And we are going to lose some tomato seeds on the floor. So, go ahead. And this one? Mm-hmm. Did you and put it in there? Two. You put two? It's okay. And we're going to do one more. And remember, you want to mark your plants. So, we keep a um, Sharpie. Um. And um, I use either um, plant labels. These are kind of stakes. Mommy. Or you can use good old-fashioned popsicle sticks that have been shaped, pencil. Uh, you can keep those as well. You can um, mod podge them too so that they don't get ruined in the rain or through the water. Yes. Um, you have to mark your plants because you won't um, tell which one is the which plant you um, planted. Well, you plant it, yeah. and then you have to wait until the fruit shows up, right? Yeah. Or the vegetables show up. And sometimes that can take too long. But you can also tell what type of plants they are sometimes by the leaves, right? Mm-hmm. So you know what type of plants we have growing outside already? Yeah. What kind? Um, some dandelions are growing in, in our garden. Mm-hmm. What about that was all the way over on the side of our garden? What, what popped up first? Um, strawberries. Strawberry. Yeah. And how can you tell it's a strawberry plant? Because different leaves tell which one are are the which plants you know. Okay, and how many leaves do, do each strawberry plant have? <laughs> they kind of have um, three. Three leaves. Good job. Okay. Because I only see three leaves on the... Uh, the tomato plants. Um, they don't. They don't group in threes. They group in twos. 
the tomato plants. Do tomato plants smell good? Yeah. They do? Uh, they kind of have a musty smell to me. Um, 85 days, sometimes 80 days, uh, Shantae, sometimes it's 75, it just depends. Uh, but once it starts fruiting, it, it goes quickly. You also want to make sure that you're putting fertilizer on there. So I'm going to show you all my, um, worm compost as well, too, because we're going to use the compost from the worms to, uh, fertilize the tomato plants. Hold on. We want the jug. Can you get the jug of water right there so we can water some more? This? Nope. The plastic this? jug. Yep. So we have a, a worm compost bin here in the house. Um, there are, we can put I mostly anything in there except for citrus. Citrus uh, fruits right here. Um, citrus fruits, they do not like onions. They do not like potatoes. And you don't want to put potato peels in there anyway because uh, the potato peels will sprout on you and then start growing potatoes in there. Um, I learned that the hard way. When we had potato stalks, uh, the, the, um, the stems growing out uh, of the, the air holes in the compost bin, uh, which was honestly when pretty cool. When did you buy that? Uh, and she wrote, she gave it to me. So the tomatoes started growing through and they, you know, um, seeds will search for, no, we're going to put it in here. We'll search for a light source. So they came through the, the uh, air holes that were in the, in the, uh, no, you cannot add meat, no dairy, no oil, um, no bones, um, no dairy. So no, no butter. Sorry. Am I still there now? Yeah, and bones. Are okay. going to be really weird. Yes, they're going to be really weird. So you want to make sure that you are putting things. They like garlic, the paper from around the garlic, but not straight garlic. They will stop eating. Strawberries you can put in there. Um, the strawberry holes. Um, any fruit. Uh, apple um, cores. Uh, they will eat the seeds because it takes too long for that seed to dry out. So you'd be okay with that. Um, let's get the worms up here. Let me get the worms and out. And some worms mm -hmm. are down here. So while you're watching the worms that are... So you'll see on here that, that some worms try to escape through the air hole. Can you see that? There's one crawling right there. You want to hold this for me, Penelope? Okay. And our compost bin is actually very... Um, it's very modest. Uh, we have uh, some mites in there, which you'll see. It's normal, so don't go throwing out the entire thing. Um, I am not as... Here, sorry. We'll do it this way, sorry. I am not as uh, loving of this thing as uh, my oldest daughter is and my youngest daughter. They like to go in with just straight hands. You can put that down. You can put that down. So you want to keep it covered with moist. You want to play around in the worm band so we, people can see the worms. That's fine. You don't want to do it without hands? Without gloves? Water. There's water. We'll just wash your hands afterwards. So as you can see, we have um, carrot peels in here. Uh, Eggshells they love. I can put my dog's hair in there. After we brush them, we can put his hair in there. Uh, there's paper that they're breaking down. We have banana peels. Um, parsley. We're looking for we're looking for a large we're looking for a large um, ball of worms. So if you can find a large ball, I would love that. And they tend to here we go. Here's a large large group of them. Um, what is this? They're eating a strawberry. That's a oh. strawberry. Yeah. So these. <laughs> These break down uh, things very, very quickly. And we have a huge group of them around all of the food. So we plant the food in one corner. Here we go. And then we give, there we go. And then we give them to worms. The worms do stay in the house, Maureen, because in Chicago, uh, we can't keep them outside for the wintertime. Otherwise, they'll, they'll, they'll die. So um, we can keep them inside. And it was, it was really rainy. So you can see these. These are red wigglers. They're not earthworms. You can't put earthworms in here. The earthworms will die, and then these worms will eat the earthworms. Um, this is a compost. So all of this black stuff that you see me holding right now is worm poop. 
It's called Warm Castings. It is very, very rich in nutrient. And we're yeah. going to separate it. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to set. You know what's funny, Shante? Uh, the wow. reason I'm so brave now is because Jessica is a trooper when it comes to this. And I don't think that I can be showed up by my seven year old. So, um, yep, there's a little worm that she's holding. And, um, yeah, so we'll look through here and we'll see some worm eggs too. No. Maybe I'll show a worm hatching. But um, this is about as. I'm sorry. I'm fading out. Want so th those are those are worm castings, and they love what you do when you have a compost bin. And this is a Rubbermaid bin, and it's only uh, maybe ten inches tall. You take this. I ordered from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. You may also have a worm farm uh, that's closer to you locally, but Uncle Jim's I was able to order two thousand worms at a time, and they ship them live. And it comes with peat moss. Um, and uh, newspaper and the instructions on how to get started. And they, they multiply almost every three months. So I started with 2,000. I should probably have about 5,000 worms in here right now. We're going to separate the castings or the compost, <laughs> and then we're going to put that on top of our plants. We're going to surround the roots, roots of our plants with it, and then we're going to start the process over again. So they can break down what we eat on a weekly basis um, in, in about two to three days. So... We just put the banana peels and the parsley and everything in there, and they should break it down. Um, we had a bunch of Dennis's hair in here uh, because he's a Saint Shepherd, Ger uh, a, a German Shepherd Saint Bernard mix, and he had a bunch of hair in here, and it's all gone. You also want to make sure that you keep newspaper because they like staying moist. Um, and you want to keep them covered and you want to make sure that the, the bin that you have with the, um, with the holes, it has plenty of holes in it for them to breathe. Can you give me that please? And you keep it out of direct sunlight. So this is why they're all kind of scattering too, because it's, the sun is shining directly on them. Um, I want to warn you with the holes in it, you are going to have some escapees and you will come down in the morning to dried worms on your floor or your table or wherever you keep it. Um, if your garage is heated, that's the perfect place to keep it. Um, and uh, it is a lot less expensive, Maureen, um, than getting than getting uh, Mommy, than getting uh, fertilizer. It it's a lot less, and it's just a great way to break down a lot of the stuff that you use. That's Jessica. Uh, that is my. I think she's going to end up being an entomologist because she loves also taking all of the the caterpillars and the bugs out of the yard too. Um, <laughs> she was the one who was really really interested in the white grub, the beetle grub. I'm the one who pulled it out. I would not have done that probably a year ago because that thing was massive. It was bigger than a quarter. So, um, yeah. Don't buy castings. Make your own. Um, um, and I'm sure you eat lots of fruits and vegetables. And, you know, it's just, it's a great way to break down. And then you your your carbon footprint. Um, no, there is no odor. odor. It should smell like dirt. If it ends up smelling like anything other than dirt, then you're probably doing something wrong. Or, um... You don't have enough uh, in there for the worms to, and you have you have to make sure you're feeding them regularly, uh, and you need to get the amount of worms for the amount of people in your house. We probably needed five thousand starting off since we have six people in the house, um, and we only started out with two thousand, so I had to uh, pull back on what we were putting in there until we got to the five thousand point. And now they're making castings faster than I anticipated, and I'm really really happy about it. Yes. Um, any other questions? So we're, we're, we're going to transplant our corn pretty soon uh, because that's getting stronger. Um, I do want to do probably uh, somewhere around 20 to 30 stalks of corn because it will be for the community and we want to share with our neighbors uh, and surrounding people. So I would love to have enough corn to do that with. The tomatoes we're going crazy with. Um, cucumbers, of course, you don't have to plant a lot because one plant will probably give you around 50 or 60 um, cucumbers, uh, which is great. We are building them. We're going to build them. So we're doing four by eight boxes. And you're welcome, Maureen. Uh, we're doing four by eight size boxes, and you don't have to uh, put a bottom on it. It's just a four by uh, four by eight, and then we're going to stake them into the ground with corner stakes so no one can come and pick them up and use them for their own stuff, and then uh, put soil in it. Before we put soil in the bottom, though, you want to put a garden liner so it looks like a black garbage bag, but it's, it's breathable. 
um, so that uh, so that those grubs that you saw on my Instagram account can't dig up and eat the eat the uh, the roots because uh, they'll kill they'll kill all of my plants and I'll cry. Um, and but the soil because we haven't gotten the soil tested across the street and we don't want to wait that long because the city of Chicago is not great with following through on things like that so um yeah we're doing raised beds all throughout and we're going to have a compost bin over there but that's going to be straight compost it's not not going to be a vermi compost at all so we can use um um old leaves grass clippings whenever we mow our lawns um uh that the lemon rinds and the orange rinds and everything can go in there um and we're hoping because it is a city that we don't get any um, vermin at all and we shouldn't because we'll have leaves and everything and we'll cover it so the food you bury and then you you put leaves and and uh, grass clippings and everything over the top to kind of disguise the odor of the food uh, we also want to put a chicken coop over it won't be this year so we're gonna build a chicken coop and we're gonna get chickens um, and yes chickens can survive Chicago winters and Wisconsin winters and Minnesota winters um, you just have to get the winter hardy or the cold hardy chickens and we'll be looking forward to having eggs, uh, fresh eggs. And then when the chickens can't lay any longer, um, because we don't really want to keep them from pets, uh, because they tend to be a little bit dirty, we will have them processed out at a, um, at a, at a local butcher shop. Sorry if that bothers you a little bit, but it's the circle of life for, for the chickens anyway. Um, yeah, so we're, we're looking to uh, have a great garden, and we have two more lots that our alderman um, has so graciously given to me after I bugged her about it for almost a year. And um, we're looking to either make one of those a learning plot, so when we do harvest, maybe teaching how to can properly, um, and then want a playground for all of the children that will be moving into the neighborhood. So... You know, I have I have really big dreams, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them all come to life. And you know, I'm I'm really excited about it. So if I if I post about it a lot, that's why. So um, they don't. Uh, so we can't. We can have roosters in Chicago, but you they will they will make you get rid of them. They will make you get rid of them if too many people complain about them. And I don't, I don't know if we would have complainers over here. They'd probably be, be happy about it. But I don't want, I don't want fertilized eggs. Also, before, before I let you all go, there's a meme floating around talking about why eggs are bad. Um, and you can think whatever you want, but the meme is, is scientifically incorrect for one reason. Uh, it states that chickens are like women and are only supposed to have one egg per month. Um, which lets me know that people don't pay attention in science class because um, chicken eggs that we eat are unfertilized eggs. So they they lay every day or every other day. Um, and the only way that it becomes fertilized, obviously, is if uh, a rooster and a hen get busy. So um, if the hens, the hens lay daily because they want to get pregnant, it's not it's not. Uh, uh, some weird, freaky scientific lab experiment where we have the egg uh, chickens laying um, eggs. Uh, normally, it's it's five to eight years. Um, I know family in the country who've had chickens for like ten to twelve years. It just depends on um, how well you're keeping them, and I'm, I'm guessing what they're eating. Um, a lot of people do grain based. We want chickens actually to kind of keep the worm population down, and they'll eat things like broccoli leaves. Um, also, chicken poop changes with whatever you're feeding them. So if they're eating a, a, a diet base of lots of greens, it's going to have green poop. Um, but I want them eating our uh, cabbage worms, which will destroy a cabbage plant and um, a cabbage, a broccoli, anything in the brassica uh, family. So those are greens, your collards, your mustards, your uh, turnips, your... Um, cauliflower, your cabbage, and your broccoli. They will destroy, oh, and Brussels sprouts. Uh, they will destroy that plant if you don't take them out. So you have to make sure that you're checking those plants daily. And they blend in very well. They are tiny green. I have a couple of those pictures on my Instagram account and my blog. Um, and, you know, you think they're really cute when you see them, and then they turn into these really ugly furry monsters, and you think you're, like, on the set of Star Trek or Star Wars because you have to pull them all off. Uh, Jessica doesn't like that, so I tend to do it when she's asleep, 
Um, and I just drown them in, I'm getting reprimanded now. I drown them in soapy water. Um, and I also spray my plants with soapy water or sprinkle them with a combination of water and cayenne pepper, which doesn't hurt the plant and doesn't change the taste of the, um, it doesn't change the, the, uh, the plant or the fruit at all. So, um, cayenne pepper mixed with water and, or, uh, soapy water, and that will keep. Yes, the, the chickens can be fed uh, dinner scraps. Um, some some people even feed them eggshells. Uh, and, you know, there are jokes in the chicken community about that. But, you know, whatever. Say what you will. Um, yeah, so that, that I am looking forward to, having chickens and fresh eggs and giving them out um, to people. Because even though we eat a lot, we can't eat that much stuff. So... Um, if you want to watch the entire video, it will be on my Facebook page. You can learn a little bit of, uh, more about gardening and starting your garden. It's not too late. The Farmer, Farmer's Almanac says that our last chance of frost in Chicago is this Wednesday, April 20th. So get your gloves and your pants that you don't mind getting dirty and some rain boots and get out there. Grow your own food. You will feel so very empowered about it and you won't turn into a hippie or a little house on the prairie person. Um, but you will enjoy the taste of all of your your fruits and vegetables. I promise you. Um, and it will drive down a little bit of your cost at the grocery store. If you want to go full homesteading, God bless you. I love my electricity and my running water and my toilet. But I do want to limit the amount that I have to uh, buy in the produce and the fruit section. So we're looking to have a uh, full lot next year. Um, where we don't have to buy any, any produce or, or um, any of the fruit. And we can grow fruit trees here, too. So we're going to look into peach trees and apple trees and, um, I think, some plums. So, uh, yeah. So if you ever, ever come by my house, you'll have fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, I don't embrace it, Nicole. You'll, you'll have fun with it. So I'll see you all later. If you do want me to talk about anything else, um, I'm going to see how often I can do this. Just leave a comment in the in the uh, comment section and I'll write them down to make sure that I can I can talk about them for you all the next time. OK, I'm off to play in my community garden. Bye. Have a good Saturday.